Con, and I am here with one of my personal favorite artists. We have Eric Scarecrow from ESC Toys. How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. And we have a few questions that we wanted to ask you about ESC Toys and yourself. And my first question is, what really got you into toy making? Uh, actually, when I first started, um, I was trying to get into comics. So, um, that it, I didn't want to say it didn't work out. After a while, I just got bored. So I just kept doing my own art. And one, one thing I learned with when I was trying to push my own art through comics was uh, my art style wasn't really accepted. So, I, but I felt what I had was different. So I just kept it, you know, going. And fortunately, you know, that was back in the, the 90s. So now here it is. What I kept doing eventually led me to do this with ESC. So I'm happy about that. Awesome. And now I understand, you know, you primarily do resin pieces. You know, you don't really cast in vinyl and stuff like that. Do you really consider what you make toys or do you see them as art pieces? They're, they're more like art figures. Um, some some, some of the toys, like the, the plush, that make Mega Suit Michi stuff. I mean, yeah, that, that, yeah, those kids could play with that. I think it was like it's safety tested, but majority of the resin pieces are more like they're for mature collectors, like 15 and up. So I feel like it's it's more of an a, a, a collectible that you appreciate on the shelf. So that that's I guess right now is what I'm focusing on because it's you know because I see that's what majority of the collectors come in when they're, when they're shopping ESC. Right. Right, and um, like. What kind of, what is your favorite piece that you have created so far? Like your oh. favorite character? Okay, um actually it's this character over here. It's it's the little spiker still waters colorway. This one for some reason it's just a combination of the semi clear resin with the pearl and the way the the red opaque paint like stands out right on top of it cuz you can see how like it looks bloody but at the same time it's like really it's a really nice translation from the art oh yeah she's very very nice I, I, I agree with you she, she doesn't look like macabre she just looks very you know nice and kind of classic but there's a little dark touch to it exactly exactly yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, also oh, I need to talk in the microphone also, um, what kind of uh, what kind of cultural influence do you think that it has on your art, or like maybe things? I understand you do a lot of like not only video game pieces, but they remind a lot of people of video game characters and stuff like that. You know, like what kind of stuff like that influences you as an artist? Uh, I have to say, um, when I was younger, uh, I was really into a lot of you know comics. So Western, a lot of Western pop culture that influenced me in the beginning but as I got older the, you know during the like the rise of the 8-bit games and with Nintendo and, and everything else and then I got put on to a lot of the Eastern culture and because you could see there's such a such a difference like you know whereas you know a lot of the cute things that w wouldn't really work well here in our culture was super over there so and as I kept exploring like Eastern pop culture, I, I really was like, wow, this is like, it's a whole new arena. So I kind of like took everything in from the comics, the video games. I'd say a lot, a lot of the video games. So it's just, it's just so different because it's a medium that has a um, combination of what animation, sound, story, and it was just told in such a different way. So. I would have to say that it, Eastern culture has played a very heavy influence on my art. And um, you recently just showed off and will be released to the Uncharted 3 uh, Drake's Deception vinyl figure. It was very, very nice. Finally. Yeah! Uh, what was it like working with uh, with Sony on this piece? Uh, Sony uh, and Naughty Dog have been nothing but supportive. Um, uh, especially the guys at Naughty Dog, they were really like... They, when, okay, when I designed this originally, I had three different versions. Uh -huh. The art for this one I did was the third and last one, and, and I did it in like a ten minutes, because like, like, I felt like the first two renderings were more of a realistic and, and more of a like half realistic, half stylized Drake, uh -huh. and then the third I felt like you know what, let me let me really go off and do a stylized version. Uh -huh. 
and it was the third one that won the whole crowd over there. So, which was really cool. And um, Sony's been amazing. Uh, Sam Thompson, the producer of Uncharted. Uh, Evan Wells, president of Naughty Dog. Uh, Frank Simon. These guys have been nothing but supportive. Shelly Gaynor, head of licensing. They, they were just amazing, like, with, with helping me, you know, get this thing together with them. So, finally, it's, it's, it's coming. coming. So, it's, it's a really, really cool piece. It's a combination of vinyl and PVC. It's available for pre-order at ESCToy.com for $49.99 and also comes with uh, exclusive DLC, which is really cool. Oh, oh yeah, he's, he's really, really nice. I mean, um, also, uh, you, you primarily work in resin and you're hand casting resin. So was it kind of different, like going the more mass production route with something like Drake or what kind of differences did you see in the production? Uh, whenever you manufacture in vinyl and you're going to produce for a mass market property yeah it's always safe to allocate certain production runs mm -hmm. for mass but we are offering like the the naughty dog colorway uh -huh. which is limited to 500 pieces and the, the scarecrow blue which are showing up here at the event which will be limited to a secret amount of pieces which will you know, will unveil next month um resin don't get me wrong, there's companies that produce resin polystone figs, they produce them in the thousands, but it's just, for this project in particular, it worked best having vinyl as the platform. So, whereas the resin, you know, I love resin, it's just, but this one had to be in vinyl. Right. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a more, you know, vinyl is more durable than, than resin, <laughs> I mean, obviously. And, uh, yeah, and it lo it, I mean, it looks fantastic. I mean, it looks, it's definitely got that style that it's still kind of, it could pass as resin a little bit if it wasn't, you know, shiny. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it definitely, like, there wasn't any, I mean, that was what I was worried about. Maybe a little bit of the detail was lost, but he came out absolutely, oh, he said moves. Oh, yeah, he has a slight articulation on the head. Oh, it's great. But you got to keep the head forward mm -hmm. so it balances out. And I have one more question for you, and it's regarding, you know, now that you've worked with more mass production route and vinyl, if you had the option to go just completely mass produced and not hand make anything and go to vinyl, do you think you would do it? Or do you think you'd say like, no, I, I want to stick to hand casting and hand painting and all of that stuff? Well, that's a good question. I, I think it eventually, as ESC continues to grow, we're going to do, we're going to do different things. Um, I do love producing limited edition resin figures because it, it still has an intimate quality about it. Whereas figures that are produced in factories overseas are, are basically, that is what it is. So it's like, you know, once you produce them, then you get them shipped in and, you know, you, you get them in the warehouse and then you distribute them. So um, I, I want to see if I could still cater to both because I think that's what we're really recognized for here. So, you know, and I, I again, I, I love resin, and I think that um, when I'm doing the resin, I, I notice that I'm kind of like the only one that kind of does it right. And I say this with respect, because uh, a lot of guys don't really um, want to experiment with resin. Everybody wants to just go and keep, you know, do vinyl. I'm like, you know, there's so much you can have fun with resin. And, um, I, I think that it's, it's having limited edition sizes are, is a really intimate thing with having the collectors because if there's a set amount of people, whether it's 50 or, or 25 or 10, that get to have this one piece, you know, that, that's like kind of like a, that's like their holy grail like sometimes, so. Okay, well, it has been wonderful talking to you today and you answered all questions and we're, I'm definitely looking forward to see what you've got coming in 2012 and keep your eyes on Total Pop. We'll, we'll definitely be covering it uh, in the next couple weeks and the next couple months. Yeah.